Hi everybody, Chris Petri here. Today we're in the studio. We're going to actually work on a little bit of um, some study time with watercolors. Um, I guess uh, with watercolors myself, when I first began to really get serious, and this was going back, you know, maybe 15 years ago, I um, used to always, you know, as a young child, I kind of, my mom was an artist and my father was an artist, and uh, there was always stuff around the house, you know, um, crayons and pencils and paints and things like that, and rulers and, and uh, paper and watercolor paper and old paintings and paintings on the wall. So I grew up in a kind of artistic um, uh, atmosphere. Um, so when I kind of saw things on TV like um, Bob Ross and William Alexander and um, Lynn Petard and some of these famous people painting on the public uh, TV, it was really, you know, exciting. I used to watch it all the time and then I would once in a while go out and buy some paints and do a couple, um, you know, paintings that I was watching on TV and try to just, you know, fool around with it and so forth. So I always kind of had uh, such a, a love for art and, and growing up with it. And But when I really started getting serious, I realized I had a, uh, as I started looking through some books that I bought from the local art stores, I realized that um, painting at a more higher level and like a professional level, let's say, uh, there's like, you know, some studying that goes into it. And it's not a big stressor. It's just, you know, a matter of, um, looking at some charts and reading, uh, reading some uh, works by people that are writing books in the watercolor uh, field. Um, so, uh, and then watching, of course, YouTube videos. And there's videos out there, tons of DVDs that are by famous artists and stuff. So, I really got really involved with all that, like doing the study stuff, and I'd make my own charts. And I had uh, teachers that I went to that had their charts, and they they gave me some charts. So I got this teacher, uh, this chart from a teacher um, a number of years ago. So you know, these I can send you by email. Um, I'll, I'll leave my email um, after I just kind of show these charts here. But what this is, this kind of breaks down colors. Uh, so the left side is, of course, all our watercolors. So these would be the tube colors that you'd see on the tube. And then I, I filled it in a little bit here uh, with some of my own paints. And you can see there's, I can maybe bring this a little closer to the so with all of these um, paints there's um, warm neutral and cool so that gives you an idea of the color how it it appears and then you have uh, transparent or opaque um, so that would be you know transparent is um, you're gonna see a lot of the white paper through the paint it's very light, translucent, transparent. Um, and then opaque, of course, is when the paint is uh, kind of thicker and has more of a gouache type look to it where it doesn't really, like let's say if you were to put a transparent watercolor paint on some glass or some plastic, uh, clear plastic, you would see much more light through the transparent versus the opaque, you wouldn't see as much light coming through. It would look more chalky or more um, more thick. So um, opacity and transparency is something that we consider when we're, when we're working with watercolors. And then we have the staining and non-staining. So a staining color would be something where when you put it onto your watercolor paper, if you wanted to maybe lift it off quick with a tissue or maybe make a correction a little bit later on, like, you know, if, if you decided you wanted to make a correction on it, it would be hard to lift off the um, the paint from the paper, whereas a non-staining uh, watercolor paint would uh, be a little easier to lift off the paper. Um, so these are just some of the things you can like look into. When I have these charts, I can send them out to you. Again, I have a file that I can send out. So these are things I got into, you know, years ago, just and I always keep them on hand too. I use them. Uh, I, re I refer to them quite a bit, especially if I have a custom painting I'm making somebody and they're asking for some specific things in a painting or something that I sometimes I need to really up my game and sort of study into some game planning on what I need to do with my colors and so forth, whether it's, you know, look, um, you know, looking into those different things we just discussed there. And here I, I did a um, my palette. So I created my palette drawing. Um, I made actually I drew out my palette with a pen and then made copies of it on the printer. And then if I use different combinations of colors, then I would just use the copy paper and fill in the different colors. So I made the 
the format of my palette once and copied it many times, just black and white with no color. And then I filled in the color abbreviations here and the paint according to what I might be using or if I change some colors around. Because maybe, you know, once in a while you might change some colors around or you want to try something new so you can kind of keep track of it and just say, you know, oh, in 2018 I was using these colors mostly and then maybe next year you might decide you're going to change a few colors and so forth. So, and this would be kind of an example of it. This would be the the one that I made the main copy of. And these are some other things I made up. This one's more of a study help for uh, my students. If I have a student, I'll always give them this, and this gives them different options with different palettes you can use. And of course, my standard palette that I use, which I think is a good one to start with, and uh, uh, it's, you can get this at the local arts, art stores, this palette here. It's an aluminum, really nice palette. So I made some of these uh, charts, and again, I made one of these charts here. And it just lists out my colors of my palette that I use, mostly. And so I just have it for reference if I need it. And this is the version I would print out first, make this first, make copies of it, and then I would fill these in like that with my paints. And then if I change to another palette, I might, of course, put all the new colors in here if I wanted to change things around. So that's just a little tidbit of um, some kind of, I don't know, this is kind of like some study stuff you can do when you have a little bit of time and maybe you just don't feel like painting or drawing and you just maybe want to sit down at the at the art table or the desk or wherever you have uh, a chance to uh, relax and sit down and do a little bit of, um, um, you know, uh, study work um, just to uh, get up on some uh, uh, latest uh, colors that you might be changing around or, or kind of learning about which colors are um, opaque and transparent and so forth. And so it's just a fun way to uh, just expand your uh, knowledge, which is great. All that knowledge you always bring to your artwork. So more not the more, more knowledge you have, the uh, more interesting and exciting your art, artwork will be. And uh, we just spilled the water bucket here. <clears throat> no big deal. And I thought today we would just have a, some quick, simple fun. We'll um, I'll put my, uh, this is my email address just quickly, so you, you can uh, email me if you want to. Um, I can send you a file with those. So it's uh, chrispetri at att.net. So that's my uh, email address. If you want a copy of those uh, paint charts, I can send you those out. This way you have a little more information. Uh, and you'll see my uh, watercolor selections that I use, my colors, my two paint colors. And let's get into just a quick exercise. So this is, again, some fun, fun studio work or, you know, just some kitchen table stuff where you just want to relax and create some, uh, some swatches here. So I'm just going to take a, a pencil and make some swatches. I have a uh, Fiskars uh, template here. It's got all rectangles, different sizes. So I'm going to use the size that fits the paper best. And we'll just quickly do these. You can do, you know, you can do swatches just by hand. I figure this is a little quicker and easier. And we'll use the, uh, the uh, template here. All right, so we got our four um, swatches worked out here. And then we can take some painter's tape some uh, artist tape and we'll just and what this does is if you put some artist tape down uh, when you're done doing these swatches these small uh, color swatches we're going to do you can actually uh, just lift off the um, lift off the tape once it's completely dry you pull off the tape and then it looks a little more finished and this way you can you, maybe you can save it and have it for reference so you might say like here we're, what, we're gonna do um, some water so we're gonna do like maybe some ocean water some uh, maybe a pond so some pond water a lake some lake water uh, maybe a river so we'll do some sw swatches on some like water type features and then what we can do is when we're done we'll pull the tape off and then we can just save this and put this in a little file next to our art table or wherever you work. If you have um, a uh, maybe a plastic container you keep all your art supplies in, and um, or if you have just a desk, you can put these in the drawer or in a manila file. 
and then whenever you go to paint or if you're going to create a certain painting and you're you're thinking of painting some water you can you can take this uh, swatch chart out and look at it and say oh yeah I remember I practiced doing ocean colors and some lake colors and some river colors and so forth and um, it'll be uh, like a nice reference for you to have and you can maybe write down the colors underneath once you're finished painting the uh, swatches you can remember the colors that you used so here um, what I'd like to do is uh, maybe the first one we'll do um, maybe we'll do some ocean water so I'll put a line about halfway across and that'll be for the ocean maybe I'll do this I'll, this will be the horizon line up here this will be the ocean areas and then here we'll have a little sand for like the beach so this way we can have some different colors and for the sand so we'll just start out and I'm just gonna you know use a very simple uh, round brush and um, let me see if I can find uh, my round brush it's across the way So now we'll uh, we'll think about ocean colors, and um, we can be creative and fun here, and just uh, we can go into our palette. And again, I have my palette all set up, and I got I have the colors, I have the um, spray bottle. I just do a little bit of quick spray with a. Um, spritzer bottle and then we can go in and we'll just have some fun here and, and uh, so I'll take some ocean colors here so I'll go with the dark up top here which is French ultramarine Burnt Sienna, Viridian Green, and I'll do a little line across the top here. So this to me reminds me of the, the ocean. Okay, and then we're gonna we'll go into more of the the uh, cobalt blue and um, French ultramarine blue and a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. And here I'm just going quickly across, side to side. And I'd like to get in some more of that Viridian Green, just to give it some more of that green kind of feel. Careful to I'm care I'm being careful to leave some of that um, the white of the paper for like little areas where the sunlight hits the water and maybe some waves crashing along there. And these are just some color ideas. And then now I'll move more into the the greens here. A couple of splashes. Okay, and then let's do a little bit of sand color. And we should have a nice uh, sand color, be a raw sienna maybe, some yellow ochre. Just for an idea here, and then we'll come back and we'll start another swatch. But we can just do a nice color ideas with the sand. Maybe a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson, just to warm it up even a little more. Like that. And a little bit of splashing on the sand. Okay. All right, we'll be right back and we'll start with some more swatches.